Moving on, in what comes as a big victory for India at the United Nations, India's Dalvir Bhandari has been re-elected to the International Court of Justice after Britain pulled its candidate Christopher Greenwood after a hard-fought race. The voting for the last seat was held in the World Court earlier tonight. It is the first time since the ICJ was established in 1944 that there will be no British judge. Bhandari received 183 out of 193 votes in the General Assembly and secured all the 15 vote votes in the Security Council after separate and simultaneous U.S. elections were held at the U.N. headquarters in New York. The elections were held after United Kingdom, in a dramatic turn of events, withdrew from the contest for the Hague-based ICJ, thus paving way for Bhandari's re-election to the prestigious World Court. Bhandari and Britain's Christopher Greenwood were locked in a neck-and-neck -neck fight for re-election to the International Court of Justice. Dalvir Bandari of India has obtained an absolute majority in the General Assembly. I have communicated the result of the vote to the President of the Security Council. I have received from the President of the Security Council the following letter, which reads as follows. Sir, I have the honor to inform you that at the 8th 1110th meeting of the Security Council held on 20th November 2017 for the purpose of electing one member of the International Court of Justice for a term of office beginning on 6th February 2018, Mr. Dalvir Bandari of India obtained an absolute majority of votes. All right, so a big victory for India, the International Court of Justice. Remember, this hasn't been a cakewalk. There were 11 rounds of voting, 11 grueling rounds of voting, ending in a deadlock every time because the voting was taking place simultaneously at the UNGA and the United Nations Security Council. And finally, breaking the deadlock, it was India that emerged victorious after Britain, for the first time in as many years, in decades, deciding to pull out its own candidate. This is also a big setback for the UK because it is for the first time that uh, Britain does not have a candidate in the United Nations top board. This is the first time when, uh, after the formation of the United Nations, <coughs> Britain has decided to pull its candidate out of the race, the thus handing over a victory, to big victory for India. Dalvir Bhandari got 183 votes out of 193 in the General Assembly and secured all the 15 votes in the United Nations Security Council. There were separate and simultaneous elections held in both the United Nations General Assembly and the United Nations Security Council. On your screens, uh, you can see the congratulations uh, pouring in for the victor, for the winner, Dalbir Bhandari, from Sushma Swaraj to Saeed Akbaruddin to the UNGA president uh, from Panama Mission UN. Words of praise is coming in from across the world, from ambassadors across the world, hailing India's big victory at the International Court of Justice. That moment when that announcement was made, everybody went up to uh, Dalvir Bhandari and congratulated him, UNGA President Sushma Swaraj, everyone praising Dalvir Bhandari and his big, big victory at the United Nations top court, the International Court of Justice. Remember, both Dalvir Bhandari and Christopher Greenwood were locked in a neck-and-neck -neck fight and there were 11 rounds of voting. Before we got the final results, there were 11 rounds of voting for this top job at the ICJ. And after those grueling 11 rounds of voting, Dalvir Bhandari emerged victorious. I'm joined by Vyond's Ramesh Ramachandran on this broadcast to give us more details about this big victory for India at the International Court of Justice. Good morning, Ramesh. A significant and a historic victory for the international for India at the International Court of Justice. From now on, what does it mean for India and uh, you know the International Court of Justice? Indeed, uh, it's a resounding diplomatic win, uh, nonetheless, for India at the ICJ election. Uh, remember, just, just look at the statistics, 183 votes in the 193-member General Assembly. So uh, only, there were only 10 abstentions. All other members of the General Assembly voted for India's candidate. Same picture obtained in the UN Security Council, where all 15 members voted 
for Justice Dalbir Bhandari. So that should give you a sense of where India's uh, position lies, where uh, India stands in the Committee of Nations, in the United Nations General Assembly. And that, to my mind, is a significant achievement, a diplomatic win for India as it uh, continues to gain, uh, gain prestige and uh, more diplomatic heft at multilateral summits and events such as this. Right, uh, Ramesh, please stay on with us. Uh, we spoke to Sayyid Akbaruddin, India's representative at the United Nations exclusively. Let's listen. I am uh, joined by uh, Sayyid Agbaruddin, permanent representative of India to the United Nations. Sir, uh, welcome on uh, Vion and, and thank you for making time for us. Uh, so my first question to you is, uh, how significant uh, is this uh, victory for India? Well, first of all, thank you for providing me the opportunity to uh, talk through you to your viewers. Um, as far as um, uh, the occasion is concer concerned, this is the first time in 70 years that a um, um, permanent member of the Security Council has lost the seat on the, on the International Court of Justice to a non-permanent member. Um, it's never happened before in the history of the United Nations. Also for the UK, they've had a judge for 95 years because even during the League of Nations, they were represented on the permanent court of, uh, of justice. So um, it is a big deal, uh, both for uh, in terms of uh, our victory over a permanent member of the Security Council, as well also our representation uh, as a judge of the common law tradition on the International Court of Justice. Uh, so you, uh, you made a very significant statement. You said those who talk of bringing the UN and updating to its 21st century world cannot look back to the toolkit of 100 years ago and try to take out a tool which has never been used in the history of the UN. So, has the time for reforms come? Or does the victory of India reflect that reforms must happen? Um, uh, you know, all institutions need to reform. Uh, that's the law of nature. Uh, if you do not reform, they will be willy-nilly, it will happen. And that's what happened here. This was not a reform that we planned for. This was not a reform that we worked for, uh, for prior to the last few days. It just happened. An opportunity arose, and uh, uh, that opportunity uh, was utilized because India's true weight was reflected in the voting on, in the United Nations. Uh, therefore, uh, reform will happen. It will either happen by design or it will happen by chance. Either way, people will have to accommodate uh, the growing stature of India uh, and make space for India as a significant player on the global stage. Uh, Mr. Akbaruddin, uh, what you said is the line which is also being continuously uh, being used by Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, after he took the office and there have been continuous demands and reforms when it comes to the Security Council. Do you think it's a long shot, sir, or the victory which, uh, you know, or, or the, the event which has happened, sir, let me put it this way, and the exit of uh, Great B uh, Britain after overwhelming uh, support which other countries showed for India is is a sign of changing time, sir? The time, time is certainly changing. Um, uh, there is no such thing as a long shot or a country of a billion. Um, uh, if we um, uh, focus on it, if we target uh, uh, our goal, uh, if we put in uh, enough uh, effort, um, uh, the sky is the limit. So uh, let's not think there is any long shot. We are a country of a billion. Uh, we have the necessary resources. We have the will. And we have a leadership to push this through. Um, so it will happen. Uh, nobody can uh, determine uh, how long it will take uh, or what will be the path. But uh, be certain it will happen. Mr. Akbaruddin, I know I'm taking your precious time. but. Uh, let me also take this opportunity to ask you, did you really expect this to end this way or, you, sir, you expected this process to last a little longer? If you can just shed the light since now, uh, if the whole process is over, sir. Um, there was a surge of momentum. Uh, it was discernible. Uh, we were confident. Uh, we had put in uh, a lot of effort. Uh, whether it would have ended in the first round or it could have gone for a few more rounds, that was only, it's only a matter of detail. Uh, but that uh, we would be successful was clear to all of us who were involved because it was a global effort. 
it was not an effort only confined to New York. It was an effort directed from Delhi. It was an effort where all our missions all over the world were involved. And it was a privilege and an honor to, for me and our team here in New York to be part of that global team effort. So it was Team India with Triumph, uh, and we were confident that we would triumph in the end. Are you saying, sir, it was an overwhelming support for India at the UN, sir? Um, uh, yes, the amount of effort that was put in um, was enormous. Uh, every ambassador that we had uh, in distant lands were involved in this effort. Our, uh, um, uh, our political leadership had taken um, a, a stance and were leading from the front. Uh, we had our foreign secretary and all the senior officials in Delhi in regular contact with emb ambassadors and embassies in Delhi. So it was a global effort, uh, and what you saw was only a reflection of uh, that global effort at the UN today. Well, absolutely. What we see are the visuals from New York where you are, you know, you are being, to use the word, mobbed or you are congratulating or being congratulated by so many ambassadors. Uh, my last question to you, uh, Mr. Akbaruddin, before I let go of you. Uh, any other, I, I would say, uh, battle in sight or any other, uh, I, I say, uh, uh, the, the, you know, okay, let's put, put it this way. Any other battle in sight, sir, after this victory? Uh, diplomats don't fight battles. Uh, diplomats uh, work their way uh, through strategic uh, friendships, partnerships, alliances. Um, so uh, uh, we are in the business of cultivating friends, making friends, uh, 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 increasing our outreach, and um, uh, trying to promote India, promote India's interests globally. So. Um, there is no uh, such term as a battle. Battle is fought somewhere else. Um, uh, in the field of diplomacy, um, you can be certain that India's natural weight will only grow. Uh, and that will be reflected at the United Nations too. Thank you so much and congratulations, sir.